Thompson, I'm a project coordinator down at Humber Wastewater Treatment Plant. Um, and the contract is odor control and process upgrades. Uh, today we're focusing on the odor control part, specifically on our biofilters. So uh, we have two biofilters that we made. Um, the centralized biofilter, you guys can see, uh, on the north end of the plant, uh, and a smaller cell biofilter. Uh, the two differences, first off size, the uh, north biofilter significantly larger um, than the south one. And the other would be that uh, this uh, north biofilter, the centralized biofilter, uh, completely self-contained and it's sub-grade structure. Uh, as opposed to a smaller cell file filter, which is accurate. Just for one sec. Yeah, sure. Sorry, we just want to get a full screen for you guys. Um, move your mouse a bit there, Kat. Where are you? You're up there, I think. Hit F5. Here we go. Yeah. There, where it is. Hey, isn't Tim Molly here? Oh, there, present from Chicago, yeah, right there. Oh, there's a, there's a presentation tip. Don't do that. We're not that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, um, so what is a biofilter, right? And how do they work? That's kind of what we're going to talk about here. Um, essentially, a biofilter is a giant living filter. Okay, um, we use it for odor control. So, uh, in the air filtration process, what it's doing is um, essentially you're taking microorganisms, uh, and these things are treating the foul air that gets passed through, uh, breaking down malodorous compounds, water soluble VOCs. And um, <clears throat> sulfur compounds like H2S out of the air, right? Um, the idea is that you have a bacteria and fungus that become immobilized uh, on a biofilm that's contained on a media. In this case, the media has a, is uh, organic is wood chips, uh, for lack of a better term. Um, and they stay on this, and they, they basically degrade the pollutants coming through the foul air that's passed through. Right? Um, on this process diagram, you can see it kind of explains. Uh, this is for the, for the centralized valve filter, like I said, much larger, um, a little bit more complex. Uh, the system itself, it, uh, its capacity is 140,000 CMH, right? That's how much, uh, how much air is being pushed through it. Um, we're drawing air, atmospheric air from the buildings, the channels, and encapsulated um, in tanks such as uh, the grid tanks or the vortexes on site, right? You can see it's passed down through uh, FRP ductwork or fiberglass reinforced plastic ductwork. Uh, it goes down in through one of two, um, <clears throat> sorry, two of three of the over control fans that you can see here. Uh, it keeps going down. It's passed down into the biofilter cells themselves. There's four cells in the central biofilter. Uh, and then it comes up through an air plenum, up through an uh, irrigated uh, media bed, and then dispersed through uh, two dispersion fans up into the atmosphere. <clears throat> on the section drawing, you can see how the FRP uh, it wraps around, it drops down into the cells. Right, this is all subgrade again. Um, you can see it feeds these trenches. Uh, each one has a, a trench in the middle of the cell. Uh, the idea it serves two purposes. First off, it distributes air um, that's being pushed down into and up through the air plenum underneath the, the media bed itself, as well as it acts as a, a drain for um, for the irrigation to, to trickle through. Down and it, it just funnels its way down into a, a centralized uh, sump pump chamber. Right. <clears throat> uh, in the media, uh, the media itself, we got uh, it's about four feet or 1200 millimeters thick or deep, rather. Uh, it consists of an irrigation system that uh, comes in two parts. There's a drip line that's situated just in the middle of the media bed itself, and then uh, surrounding the perimeter of each cell, there is uh, supposed sprinkler heads, essentially, right? To get the surface contact. Are they using effluent or potable? Uh, it's actually plant surface water, right? So it's um, it's not fully treated, but it's what's it's what's, yeah, what's, what's going through the rest of the plant. There. Um, so jumping forward, uh, some of the key challenges we beat. Um, we'll go through the list here real quick, but I'll touch base on them in the, in the future slides. That we want. Uh, concrete trueness to the drain, uh, the scupper drain that was actually a self bio filter. Um, FRP duct supports, uh, that was around the north biofilter. Irrigation and, um, so this was uh, the irrigation lines getting clogged up uh, with the plant service wire as a result of the grid inside of it. Um, control panel wiring and damper operation, those are for two dispersion, uh, two dispersion fans. The damper uh, sound enclosures, this is for our three odor control fans. Uh, 
uh, and before we say smoke test on the centralized pile filter, which is a little bit different, uh, a little more taxing than the uh, smaller cell pile filter. Right? So we'll go over some of the key components. Right? Um, at the top here, you can see this is the centralized pile filter. Uh, for earth retention, we had a secant pile wall uh, for about half the excavation. The other half were uh, soldier piles and tagging. Right? Um, it's, it goes down to uh, it's a shale, shale base. Um, the actual structure itself, uh, reinforced concrete, right? It's about 63 meters by 33 meters wide. That's about 2,100 meters squared. Um, <clears throat> for the top, we have a 10-inch precast with a 6-inch topping on that, which uh, incidentally, that topping was our biggest concrete pour at about 300 meters, um, done just right around New Year's, about two years ago, something like that. Um, it goes about 6 meters or 20 feet deep, give or take. So it gives it a volume of about 13,000 meters cubed, right? That ends up being, you can rationalize it, it's like um, from the 40 yard line to the end zone, about two stories high for the football field, right? So, um, the inside of it, you can see here, again, this is a, this is a centralized bio filter. Um, we'll start off with, you can see the bio floor itself. Uh, this creates an air plenum, the air is passed through up through the trench. Um, it's corrugated, or uh, it's corrugated, but it's uh, lots of little holes in it, right? So this one kind of really lets the air pass through it. Um, on top of it, it goes a geo net, um, which is just essentially, it's like an engineered snow fence for the most part, right? Really tightly knit. It keeps the media from falling down into the air plenum a little bit. Uh, everything's waterproof. Uh, we used a uh, Semcoat cementitious uh, cement based waterproofing material. It goes about three or four feet above the, uh, the media line. Uh, again, you can see the media here. We got, uh, like I said, it's about four feet thick with the irrigation lines in the middle. You can see them coming down through here, and then uh, the sprinkler head's just about here. Um, they rest about six to eight inches above the, above the media uh, elevation. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice here, the, the bottom floor itself is kind of neat. It's um, at 50 degrees, this stuff can handle a load of about 16,000 pounds per square foot, right? And that increases drastically uh, as the temperature decreases, right? So um, just an example of those kind of uh, front end loader driving over, those are three hot days long, right? So, um, jump before. <clears throat> now you can see uh, we have odor control fans. There's three of them, you only see two here. Uh, there's two odor control fans that are doing one is standby, so there's always a redundancy, I guess, that is very typical in the plant. Um, <clears throat> Biggest, uh, this is two, 200 horsepower. Biggest problem with this, or the, um, the issue surrounding this was the uh, sound enclosures, right? Uh, they required ring sign, they were too small. And it, didn't, uh, it didn't leave room for maintenance or servicing them, right? Uh, to the right, you guys will see the, the uh, two 40 horsepower dispersion fans, uh, tri-stack stroke release, flows dilution dispersion fans, right? Um, so these are kind of neat. They suck. These are what sucks the air right out of the uh, the biofilter itself. Um, there's an additional damper too. So before the air comes out of these things, it sucks in fresh air and it mixes it, um, thus diluting it. Right? Um, that's the dilution is first advanced, right? Uh, issue surrounding this one was the controls, uh, the panel and the damper. They didn't exactly jive. They required uh, they required uh, process control or control process. Right? Um, so it was something that was left out, ended up being an extra. But uh, again, it's something that you always want to kind of look at before you're on the field with uh, a couple guys scratching their heads. Um, <clears throat> moving forward, like I said, it's, uh, it's FRP ductwork, fiberglass reinforced plastic uh, ductwork. Uh, I like this picture particularly because it catches, this is about 250 meters worth of it, um, running from the top, it actually goes back. Uh, the top of our headworks building, it crosses a, a, a structural steel trestle, uh, bridge up in the air, um, it comes across the, the north grid building of the plant, it ties into both buildings and it ties into the uh, effluent, uh, influent effluent channel, so the primary tanks just behind it as well. And then you can see it wraps around, it drops down about 30 feet, uh, ties into the odor control fans over here, wraps around and drops into the north side of the uh, centralized bio filter. <coughs> So it's pretty neat. Uh, picture, actually. Um, our self-bio filter, you can see the geo net in this one too. 
Uh, again, it's reinforced concrete structure, right? a little bit smaller, um, and it's open to the atmosphere, as we were saying. Right? Uh, this one uh, services the uh, self-primary tank solely, right? So again, a lot smaller. There's 30, uh, 33, 33 cubic meters, 33,000. 3,300 cubic meters of um, the material in the south bio for a centralized bio filter. There's only 170 in this one, right? So uh, considerably smaller. So going forward, you can see um, again the south bio filter here. Uh, the these bio floor itself, you can see it's almost like an engineered melting for the most part, right? But this is what creates the drainage plane and also um, creates the plenum for uh, you know for air. Uh, one of the issues we had with the cell file filter again was concrete finishing. Um, it was uh, it, it, it wasn't a true plane, right? It didn't drain right down into the scupper drain to uh, collect further down the sump chamber. So it was um, it was a chip and patch, right? Fairly straightforward, but again, it, uh, time and money. So um, <clears throat> the other side of the valve floor, and you can see another issue that we had here. Um, what we realized is. This was the first one that we got up and running. Um, the irrigation system started to clog up because the plant surface water had um, solids in it, grits, vines like that. Uh, and so we noticed that was, that was catching up in the sprinkler heads and they weren't performing like they were supposed to. Um, so that resulted in a change and we ended up installing a basket strainer up line, upstream of the, uh, of the irrigation system here. Right? So it's an unsolved problem fairly well, but it's something to take into consideration even though it's treated water, it's not, uh, you know, it's not pure, it's not clean, right? <clears throat> um, and again, so uh, the, uh, the south, the south bio filter services the south primary tanks. We have um, a checker plate that's going on the south tanks as well as the north, right? The idea behind this um, aluminum checker plate, it's encapsulation, right? Uh, there's also actually a, a rubber curtain that separates the uh, tanks from the channels themselves too. Um, you encapsulate that, and that, that allows you to connect, tie into the um, to the FRP ductwork system, right, and draw out all that water there. So that was another uh, significant part, I guess, regarding the water control. Um, now, so we go into quality control of the media, right? Um, like I said, so that's uh, that's a lot of mulch, right? That's a lot of wood chips. We had spent about uh, it's about a quarter million dollars worth, right? So we wanted to make sure that we got the right stuff, and it was it was going to perform like it was supposed to, and we got spec, right? Um, a couple key things were the grading limits of the material itself, as well as uh, the pH levels, right? It had to reach a, be within a certain range as well. Um, so we took a little field trip, right? We went up to the uh, to the vendor to uh, basically just to ensure that they had facilities that they were able to constantly produce um, the quality and the grade and the, you know the specific, the specified and approved product uh, that we were after, right? So you can see this is actually where they trommel. You know, trommel, it's uh, basically a big screen, right? You can put different sizes in, they take out the pieces that are too large and the pieces that are too small all through, and you can kind of fine tune it, um, more or less, within, within, a reasonable, um, you know, within reasonable limits, so. Um, and then we go into commissioning, right? Uh, I don't know if you guys can actually start this, there's a little video there, if you want to, um, if you want to start it. Everything's hooked up to a SCADA system with uh, supervisory control and data acquisition, right? So that's kind of how everything's over um, managed, right? So during the commissioning phase, uh, we go through I.O. or process our uh, loop checks, uh, alarm conditioning, and um, process logic, which is things happening in the sequence that are supposed to happen. But uh, probably the most interesting, fun thing to do and watch was the smoke testing, right? Uh, so essentially, we introduced air into the plenum and make sure that we're getting an even distribution that's coming up through the media, uh, and then we're not finding any dead zones or anything like that. Right? So it happens fairly quickly here. Um, and we don't have to watch the whole video because we really we get smoked out in a couple seconds here, guys. <laughs> but, uh, and it passed, right? With flying colors. So, um, so some of the key benefits, right? A couple of benefits to this thing, um, to these biofilters. They're fairly straightforward to build and operate, uh, and they're fairly cost effective um, to maintain, assuming that you're meeting uh, uh, your, your solids, whatever you're passing through, it doesn't have a really long um, like degradation, degradation time. 
Uh, you're staying within a certain temperature range to facilitate uh, uh, the microbes and stuff that are living on the mulch or media itself. Um, and there's one more thing I can't really remember. A couple drawbacks though are the um, a couple drawbacks to the size of these things is a big footprint. Um, and that's just due to the nature of the media and you need so much spread out so far. Um, and the other biggest drawback would, uh, would be that you do have to treat the effluent water the drainage water. Uh, in, in, this, in this case, it just goes right back into the plant, so it's not that big of a deal. But um, it does have a high BOD or uh, biological oxygen demand. You need so much dissolved oxygen in the water to facilitate the little things that are living in there that break down the organics, right? So, that's about it, guys. Well, um, hey. I got a question for you. Okay. Shoot. All right, how did you get the filter media in the big tank? How did we get the filter media in? In was the precast lid on first? No, no, actually, so there's access hatches. Yes. Um, there's little man hatches, and then there's larger ones on the uh, along the north side there. How do you um, move it around in there then? Once it gets down in there, uh, well, actually, no, we blew it in. Oh, he blew it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, um, yeah, we yeah. had blower trucks, big blower Usually trucks. Really it, looks, uh, it looks pretty wet, though. It was a little, a little time consuming, right? Rather than using like a front end loader or something. It's like, like wood that. chips. But it's um, yeah, a little worse. Like, sometimes it's a pain in the ass to do it. Oh, yeah, so guys, I got Lindsay videotaping this. So I want to give a shout out to my mom. She's always asking me what, uh, <laughs> what I do at work and stuff, right? So, you know. Too bad nobody's listening anymore. Sorry, mom, nobody's listening. Thank you so much.